Welcome back to Master Glass. I am your host, Livio. Today we're gonna make two cocktails, both of which have Angostura bitters as the base. Kind of weird, right? Well, one is the Trinidad Especial, the other one is the Trinidad Sour. Let's go. The first drink I'm gonna make for you is the Trinidad Especial. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make both of these drinks at the same time so that you can see their similarities slash differences. A simple chill of the glasses here. Okay, give this a little whirl just to get the ice to touch the entire surface of the glass. And I'm gonna set these to here to the side so that Bronson, our cameraman over here, can take a look at what I'm doing. I'm gonna set those there. Now in the uh, tins here, I'm gonna just add some ice as well. Now what's unique really about these cocktails is their base ingredient. Both of them call for Angostura bitters as a base. Now the best way to explain how interesting that is to me is if I were to explain basil, right? What is basil usually in food? It's a accent. You put the basil on top of the pizza, you put the basil on top of a bowl of pasta, uh, you might put the basil on top of a tomato dish of a tomato salad of sorts. Uh, but when you make pesto, you don't just take one basil leaf and you put it on top, you make the whole meal about the the basil, and then you might add a little bit of Parmesan cheese to make the cheese now the accent. This drink does something very similar because Angostura bitters are typically just an accent, right? We use just a few drops of them. They are like the salt and the pepper of the bartender, but in this case here, they are the base uh, alcohol of this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crack a new bottle and Okay, now a little trick here. You see how that the bottle has the liquid coming out of it? I need to remove this cap. This, this bitter, these bitters here can stain a lot. So in this case here, I'm gonna just go ahead and remove the cap. And I know there are some bartenders that can do this a lot quicker than me, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a little piece of cloth because I don't want this stuff to spill on top of me. That right there could have ended up on my shirt. So, the drink to the left here is going to be the drink that is called the Trinidad Especial, created in 2008 by Valentino Bolognese, an Italian bartender, uh, a dominant Italian bartender, famous in many, uh, who bartended in many great uh, cocktail-centric bars in Ferrara. Uh, and in 2008, while he was competing in a Angostura cocktail competition, he made this cocktail by adding one and a half ounces, think about that, of Angostura bitters. Now, I'm gonna move over here to 2009, one year later, a bartender by the name of Giuseppe Gonzalez is competing in another cocktail competition and is inspired by the Trinidad Especial, so he creates the Trinidad Sour. So we have one and a half ounces, and I'm sorry, I just flipped the order. The Trinidad Especial had one ounce. The Trinidad Sour has one and a half ounces, okay? Give me a like for that. So in here, I am going to add a half an ounce of Barso Pisco. Uh, Barso Pisco is a Peruvian Pisco. This here is made from the Mosto Verde Italia grape. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a half an ounce of the Pisco right here. And then in the case of the Trinidad Sour, I'm gonna add a half an ounce of Rittenhouse Rye. So far these drinks are very similar, right? We have two, uh, uh, highly concentrated uh, drinks made with Angostura bitters. We have two funky spirits, right? Pisco is really funky and nice and aromatic. Rye is very funky and spicy and aromatic. Now, in order to augment the one and a half ounces, so one thing to think about is bitters are really astringent. 
They're not just nice and spicy and bitter. They have this high level of astringency. And so to offshoot that high level of astringency, including what we're gonna end up putting here in the citrus, you need a lot of Orgeat syrup, which brings me to the Liquid Alchemist Orgeat. So in order to augment the one and a half, the one ounce, I'm sorry, of bitters that is inside the Especial, we're gonna add one ounce of Orgeat. And in order to augment the one and a half ounces of bitters that are inside the Trinidad Sour, we're gonna add an hour, we're gonna add an ounce and a half, okay? Okay. Now here's another point where the differentiation is so minimal. In the Trinidad Especial, Valentino Bolognese added three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. So I'm gonna set that right there. And in the Trinidad Sour, Giuseppe Gonzalez added three quarters of an ounce of a lime. So, just like that. We have three quarters of an ounce lemon. And right here, we're gonna have three quarters of an ounce of lime. Now, I don't want you to leave me quite yet, but I do have an episode of the Trinidad Sour with Giuseppe Gonzalez on it, okay? So you can go ahead and listen to his story the way he explains it, which is obviously better than the way I'm gonna explain it, as how it all went down. But the reason why this video is cool is because I wanna taste the difference between the two. Okay, so now we've got the Especial to the left. Let's give this a quick shake. I'm gonna just set that there for one second. Don't you go away. Don't get diluted, okay? And we got a sour to the right. Okay. And now this is when I wish I had two strainers, but I don't. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and fine strain. And we have this really bright orange brown color. And that's gonna be the case on both of them, obviously. Okay. All right. And over here with the sour. Obviously the sour has more liquid in it. It's a longer drink by about an ounce. So it fills the glass a little more. It's also going to be a little bit more brown or orangey because it has more ango in it. Okay, let's talk about garnish real quick. The garnish of this bad boy was a lime peel. Um, the garnish of this one was no garnish, according to Gonzalez. And what you're gonna see is these two drinks are gonna slowly start layering. You're gonna see a little foam on top because the bitters obviously are also very frothy. But let's go ahead and try the difference between these two. Color-wise, very similar. I would even say identical. Aroma? Not much, just a hint of, just a hint of cloves here. Not really much to taste in the bitters or in the cocktail, just a little bit of bitters and a little bit of cloves. Not much aroma here too, maybe just a slight more of the bitters coming through on this one because obviously there's more in there. Let's see. What a great drink. 
what a forward thinker good old Valentino Bolognese was. Mm. Just lovely spices. Lovely, lovely. The Angostura is allowed to shine. And when it shines, we understand. This cocktail makes me understand why Angostura is such a great ingredient in terms of enhancing so many cocktails, sort of like the salt and the pepper of many cocktails out there. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, my interpretation is the Trinidad Especial is much more sessionable. It's a little bit more light, a little bit more about the sour, a little bit less about the big and the bold flavors. Over here, because we have a half an ounce more of Ango, and because we have a dark spirit, right? We have a rye, so we're getting a little bit of spice. This one here just seems to have a little more oomph into it. Now, the crazy thing that gets me thinking is, as I mentioned, these drinks are becoming really popular, right? Especially the Trinidad Sour, which was recently recognized as a, a neoclassic cocktail from the International Bartenders Association. The, what's really interesting is how come one drink had to wait for another one in order to become popular? Those are the questions I would like to ask for you to comment below. Is it the narrator? Is it because the, the, the Especial needed the outgoing Giuseppe Gonzalez to uh, advertise the sour and put it on the map and all the cocktail community fell in love with it, which in turn, as Gonzalez was telling the story, create, created some sort of awareness of the Especial? I don't know, but let me know. Now, if you liked this episode, please do give it a like and please do subscribe to the channel because right here on Master Your Glass, <laughs> well, should we just close with the garden? I don't think it's gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you like this episode, please give it a like. Please subscribe to Master Glass because on this show we don't just do cocktails, we talk about traditions. <laughs>